Hey there, welcome to The Magic and the Music. I'm Jen, it's so great to have you with us. Today we are going to be rating all of the Disney Vacation Club resorts that are located at Walt Disney World. Each of these resorts is going to be getting a score on a scale of one to 10. Let's get right to it. We are going to be going through these resorts in location order. So we're grouping them by their locations because we think it's a little bit easier for you to uh, keep track of all these resorts based on their locations. Our first resort is Disney's Beach Club. So Disney's Beach Club Villas opened on July 1st, 2002. The DVC contract end date is January 31st, 2042. Uh, the theme for Beach Club is a beach resort. Um, it has some nautical influences and um, especially because it is adjoined to its sister resort, the Yacht Club, which is one of the Disney um, deluxe hotel resorts. There are several dining options at the Beach Club, and those include the Yachtsman's Steakhouse, which is actually at the Yacht Club, but it's close by, uh, Cape May Cafe, Beaches and Cream Soda Shop. There are lounges as well, Martha's Vineyard Lounge and Crew Cup Lounge, which is over at the Yacht Club. There is also a quick service option inside of the gift shop. I believe it's called the Marketplace there. There is a beach area with chairs, but swimming is not allowed in the water there, so Beach Club is situated along Crescent Lake, which is a lovely spot right near the International Gateway at the back entrance to Epcot. Big feature that everyone pretty much knows about with Beach Club is their feature pool, and it is called Storm Along Bay. It is actually shared between Beach Club and Yacht Club, and it is a really fantastic pool. A lot of people call it a mini water park. It has a lazy river. It has a sandy bottom area of the pool. It's just a huge meandering pool, big long water slide, and that is definitely one of the top reasons that you might want to stay at Beach Club Resort. Transportation is one of the areas where Beach Club really, really shines. Beach Club actually is walking distance right into the International Gateway at Epcot, and it is fantastic. I mean, it's literally about a two minute walk. It's great because that opens up a lot of dining options. If you, especially if you have an annual pass and you're able to just kind of hop into the park, uh, that would be a great option for dining. You also are able to access the Skyliner. It's very nearby. Beach Club also has the option of taking a boat to Hollywood Studios. So it, it's a great resort. It's also close enough that you could choose to walk to Hollywood Studios. So you have a lot of different places that you could walk, take the Skyliner, or take the boat. Now the downside um, with the buses is that sometimes, certain times of day, those buses for Beach Club get shared with, with like say Boardwalk as well or Yacht Club. So you might actually have to wait multiple stops and that can kind of slow down transportation. That's maybe a negative on the transportation but there's some huge positives on the other side. Some pros and reasons that you might want to stay at the Beach Club are that it is the best possible location to access Epcot, especially if you're there for one of the festivals and you want to dine and, and try all the food booths that there is no better place to be than the Beach Club. Also fantastic pool, that's a great place to take your family if you're going to spend a day not in the park, that is like the ideal pool actually to do that. The cons are that this resort can actually be very difficult to book if you don't own points there. If this is not your home resort, it can be very tough. Um, it's really popular during the food and wine and also New Year's because you can imagine walking straight out of Epcot to your hotel is pretty awesome. Here are our final ratings on Beach Club. Park access and transportation, we set a 10. For dining, we said it's a seven. The recreation and amenities, we gave it a nine. For the value category, what I'm really talking about is what can you get for your points when you are booking there? I would say um, Beach Club is not the cheapest resort, is not the most expensive resort, it's just kind of in the middle. So we gave that one a six. For the availability, I gave it a two. It's kind of tough to get. I mean, I have booked it a couple of times, but it's really hard to book, let's be honest. All right, I will reveal the total scores at the end, so we're gonna move on to our next Epcot area resort. The next resort on our list is Disney's Boardwalk Resort. It opened on July 1st, 1996. Uh, the DVC contract end date is January 31st, 2042. There are many dining options at this resort, including Flying Fish Cafe, Trattoria Al Forno, Boardwalk Bakery, Pizza Window, ESPN Club, and Big River Grill and Brewing Works, which I need to double check. A few of these things have closed and I don't know what has reopened. There are lounges, the Bellevue Lounge, Jelly Rolls, and Abracadabra. So really most of the things that I've listed are really actually at the Boardwalk area. Um, one of the downsides for me, it doesn't have like a proper quick service where you can go grab breakfast or something like that. 
They have a feature pool called the Luna Park Pool, plus a couple of quiet pools. Luna Park is the infamous creepy clown slide. Creepy clown slide. Don't look into its eyes. Creepy clown slide was haunting dreams for many, many years and creating nightmares for people like me, but creepy clown is gone. The pool has recently been refurbished and creepy clown is out of here. So I'm really happy they've rethemed it with uh, just Mickey and friends. Uh, don't worry, there are still creepy things in this resort. Go check out those nanny chairs like in the lobby. What's up with that? It's weird. So anyway, there's some creepy old stuff in this resort and if that's your thing, have fun. There's also a business center, community hall, fitness center, bike rentals, the fun atmosphere of the boardwalk and the fun evening lights and activity of the boardwalk. Some pros of the boardwalk resort are that it is not that expensive in terms of points to stay there. The standard view rooms are actually quite a good value. You have great access to Epcot and Hollywood Studios. You have great access to a lot of dining locations, including the Swan and Dolphin. You can go right across and enjoy the dining options over there as well. The cons for this resort are, well, some of those hallways are really long. If you're way out at the end, that's quite a long walk. Some people, that's kind of an issue for them. We don't mind so much. Um, even after the refurbishment, for my taste, I think the bathrooms still feel pretty dated to me. Um, I think they needed to be ripped out in new tiles. I don't know, maybe those were new tiles, but I feel like they're still not quite updated. The rooms are not really that big, and again, I mentioned no quick service inside the resorts. Again, the buses, just like Beach Club, can sometimes be shared between nearby resorts, and that's a little bit of a bummer because it can slow things down a little bit. But again, you know, if you're going to Hollywood Studios and Epcot primarily, you know, that's not an issue at all, and you have excellent access to those parks. Okay, our score for Boardwalk Resort. For park access and transportation, we gave it an eight. For dining, we gave it a seven. On recreation and amenities, it's an eight. For availability, we said it's a six. Okay, that's it for the Boardwalk. I'm hiding that total. So we're gonna go right on to our next Epcot area resort. So the next one is the Riviera Resort, and it is technically still in the Epcot area. I know it is not quite as close as the others, so some of you might take issue with me already on that. So Disney's Riviera Resort opened on December 16th, 2019. The contracts expire on January 31st, 2070. So this one has the latest expiration date. It is the newest DVC resort and it's themed after the French and Italian Riviera. For dining, there are some wonderful options. Topolino's Terrace, Primo Piatto, which is the quick service, Le Petit Cafe. Um, you have lounges uh, that include Bar Riva and the lounge up at Topolino's Terrace. So there are some really great dining options there for you. Not that many, but the quality of those dining options are really, really good. The main feature pool at Disney's Riviera Resort is very pretty and has a really pretty slide and it has a great children's play, splash and play area called Si Vous Play. Get it? It's cute. So that, that's a really fun feature for those of us who have little kids. This resort features a fitness center and a bocce ball court, which is pretty cool. For transportation, Riviera has access to the Skyliner. It's really the resort that opened up with the Skyliner, and it has its own stop on the Skyliner, which is really cool. Um, so it gives you access to Hollywood Studios and Epcot via the Skyliner. You do have to take the bus to the others. One little feature I love about the bus stops at Riviera is that you can walk completely undercover all the way from inside the building out to the bus stops. So like if it's a downpour in summer in Florida, you are not going to get wet walking to and from the bus stop. And for me, that's like a big plus. The pros for Riviera Resort are that it is a new, beautifully designed, fully updated resort. It is very relaxing. They have excellent food. Many rooms have views of the Epcot and Magic Kingdom fireworks. It has split bathrooms in the studios, which is also a great feature that we love, where someone could take a bath on one side and then take a shower on the other side, and there's kind of a pocket door in between. Um, the lock-off two bedrooms actually can sleep up to 10, which is another special feature for Riviera. There is lots of resort-specific merchandise for Riviera, which a lot of people love. And you can even buy the artwork from the resort. So they kind of did these Disney art pieces that are inspired kind of by the masters. And then you can actually purchase these and take them home. It's so cool that you can take your favorite art pieces home with you from Riviera. They should do that at all the resorts for sure. The cons for Riviera, well, it's expensive. Uh, it's, it's a lot of points to book the rooms. You can't walk directly to a theme park. And if you purchase a Riviera DVC contract and then you later resell that contract, or if you buy a resale contract yourself, those points can only ever be used at Riviera. And that's kind of a big bummer. Big negative. Thanks a lot, Disney. 
Our scores for Riviera are as follows. Park access and transportation, we gave it an eight. For dining, we gave it a nine. For recreation and amenities, we said seven. For value, we had to give it a three. And for availability, we gave Riviera Resort a four. Okay, we are moving on to another area of property and it's that Animal Kingdom area, the Animal Kingdom Lodge. And you actually have two different sections to Animal Kingdom Lodge. You have Animal Kingdom Villas over at Jumbo House and then you have Kidani Village. So there are two different sections, but again, kind of like Beach Club, and Yacht Club, they're sort of connected and share some amenities kind of between them, but they're also sort of spread out. Animal Kingdom Villas opened on July 2nd, 2007. That was the Jumbo House side. And on May 1st, 2009, they opened the Kidani Village side. The DVC contract end date is January 31st, 2057. Animal Kingdom Lodge and Kidani Village are themed around African wildlife and they are full of beautiful, authentic African art. If you are looking for an experience that is unique, Animal Kingdom Lodge is the perfect place to go. Dining is excellent at Animal Kingdom Lodge. Um, you have Sanaa over at Kidani, and then you have um, at Jumbo House, you've got Chico, Boma, and the Mara, which is the quick service. So these are all amazing dining locations. Really some of the best restaurants at Disney World are located at Animal Kingdom Lodge. There's also a community hall over at Kidani Village and a fitness center. You've got savannas with 30 plus species of animals, which is really, really cool and unique and memorable. The transportation to all of the parks is actually by bus, which is a big negative for a lot of people. The pros for Animal Kingdom Lodge is that you have amazing savannas with animals that are native to Africa. I mean, to me that it was mind blowing. There are cultural representatives from Africa and they have animal experts and people who will do talks. They have art tours where they take you around and tell you about all the art. It's really a lot of fun. So it's got amazing unique dining. That's another pro. It's a great value for your points as well. They have excellent pools. Um, really good proximity to Animal Kingdom. The con, I would say the biggest con for Animal Kingdom Lodge is just that the, you have to take the bus everywhere. Our scores for Animal Kingdom Lodge are for park access and transportation, we give it a four. It's not really very magical at all. <laughs> for dining, we gave it a nine. For recreation and amenities, we gave it an eight. For value, points value, we gave Animal Kingdom Lodge a 10. We don't think that there is any resort that beats Animal Kingdom Lodge in terms of value. And of course, something that helps that a lot is that they have the infamous value rooms. There are very few of them, but they are an incredible value. They are a very, very low point cost for what you are getting. But even their standard rooms are actually a really good value and you get a great experience for not a lot of points. For availability, we gave it an eight. Yes, there are certain room categories like concierge, which actually Animal Kingdom Lodge is the only Disney Vacation Club property at Disney World that has a concierge level. And so between booking concierge and value categories is very, very hard. But all of the other categories, there is quite good availability and you can often switch to this resort at seven months. Now we are moving on to the Disney Springs area resorts. And the first one, of course, that comes to mind is Saratoga Springs Resort. Disney Saratoga Springs Resort and Spa was opened on May 17th, 2004. The contract end date is January 31st, 2054. The dining for this resort, um, there are several options. You have the Turf Club Bar and Grill, the Artist's Palette, you have various pool bars, um, you've got some lounges, the Turf Club Lounge, On the Rocks Lounge, Backstretch Pool Bar, and you also have easy access to Disney Springs and its many, many dining options. And that's of course the biggest reason that people love this resort is that they have great access to all of the options at Disney Springs. There are five different pools. Two of them have water slides, which is cool. Not just the one feature pool with the water slide, you actually have two different ones. There is also a community hall, bike rentals, fitness center and full service spa. And that's, again, there are only two resorts that have the full service spa. You've got Saratoga Springs and then you've got the Grand Floridian. 
Saratoga Springs also has a really unique room type and it is called the Treehouse Villas. These are really unique spread out villas that are kind of along the water and they have these like decks and you walk up the decks and they have grills and it just feels a little more, you're not camping, but you're kind of in this little cabin thing and it's really cute. And they also accommodate a little bit larger group. They are more isolated, so it's better if you have a car if you're gonna stay at those. But if you're looking for something really unique, Treehouse Villas are a great option. Your transportation options over at Saratoga Springs are going to be to walk or take a water taxi to Disney Springs. For all of the theme parks, you will have to take a bus. Now, this is kind of a big negative on the transportation side. They have an internal bus system. If you have stayed at any of the moderate resorts at Disney World, you are aware that almost all of them have an internal bus system where you have to stop at these in internal bus stops before the bus actually goes all the way out to the theme park and then of course the same thing when you come back you might get back into the resort and instead of getting dropped off right away you might have to wait two or three bus stops to get to your area of the resort so the pros for saratoga springs resort is that it is really easy to book it's the last resort to fill up because it's huge if you are looking for a room you're almost guaranteed to find one at saratoga springs unless it's a very busy time the recent refurbishment has really really upgraded the quality and feel of the rooms the styling of the rooms it's much nicer um, they weren't terrible before but now they're really nice they also added in fold down queen beds in a lot of the rooms so that makes things more comfortable rather than having to use the pull out bed i think that's a big upgrade this is a great resort if you love Disney Springs. So if you're a foodie and you want to be dining at all the places at Disney Springs, boy, Saratoga Springs is the place for you. The cons for Saratoga Springs is that it's really, really big. So it's really spread out. If you want to walk back to the main building and you're in a standard location room, it could be a long walk. And if it's summer, that can be a really, really hot, long walk. For me, that sometimes makes it feel a little bit more like a moderate, even though the rooms are nice. Okay, our ratings for Saratoga Springs, here we go. For park access and transportation, we gave it a three. Um, when it comes to dining, we gave it an eight. For recreation and amenities, we said it's a nine. For value, we gave Saratoga Springs an eight. For availability, we gave Saratoga Springs a 10 because it's the easiest one to book. So there you go, it's a 10. Okay, the next resort on our list, and I kind of left this as a Disney Springs area resort, <laughs> is Old Key West. It is the original Disney Vacation Club resort. Old Key West was opened on December 20th, 1991. This one's been around for a while. The contract end date is January 31st, 2042, or January 31st, 2057. So the owners were actually offered at one point an option to extend their contracts and to pay an additional per point fee to extend the contracts out by 15 years. And a lot of smart people did that and some people didn't. And I think they're regretting that right now. So uh, if you buy this on the resale market, you will see that some of them have a 2042 expiration date. Some of them have a 2057 expiration date. Um, the good news is if you buy this directly from Disney, all of the new direct contracts have the 2057 expiration date. It has the largest rooms and also kind of interesting shaped rooms as well. For dining, your options are Olivia's Cafe, Goods Food To Go, you have lounges, the gurgling suitcase, and then the pool bars. So not that many dining options and so that's a little bit tougher because you aren't right next to another resort or another area that you can go and get different food. There's a feature pool plus three different leisure pools, which are kind of the quiet pools. There are bike rentals, fishing, a community hall, and a fitness center. And for transportation, you have the option of taking a water taxi to Disney Springs, and then you'll have to take a bus to all the theme parks. Now, very much like Saratoga Springs, this is the other DVC resort that has the internal bus system, which, oh, I mean, it unfortunately makes it feel for me like a moderate, which I don't like because I don't think the rooms are moderate at all. But if you have a car, this probably won't bother you. But if you're like us and you fly in, this might be a major factor for you because you have to take the bus to get back to the main building if you have a room that's a long walk or that's a long way away. The pros for Old Key West are that they have huge, huge rooms. Uh, it's an excellent value. You get a lot for your points. The cons for me of Old Key West would be that internal bus system. That's not great. It is a large resort. It's really, really spread out. So it could be a long walk over to the main building, like for food or, or other um, to access other services. And you don't really have any premium access, you know, to a theme park 
or you don't really have views of the theme parks or anything like that. Here are our scores for Old Key West. For park access and transportation, it's a three. For dining, we said it was a five. For recreation and amenities, it's a seven. For value, it got a nine. For availability, we gave Old Key West a nine. Okay, the excitement is building because we are starting now the Magic Kingdom area resorts. And I know a lot of you love these. A lot of your favorite resorts are located right by the Magic Kingdom because that's kind of where everybody goes first most of the time, right? The first resort on our list is Boulder Ridge Villas and it is located at Disney's Wilderness Lodge Resort. This DVC resort opened as the Villas at Disney's Wilderness Lodge on November 15th, 2000. It was renamed to Boulder Ridge Villas at Disney's Wilderness Lodge in 2016 because they had to make a distinction between that one and Copper Creek, which I will get to in a moment. Um, the DVC contract end date for Boulder Ridge is January 31st, 2042. Boulder Ridge is in the building on the side of Wilderness Lodge. It's not like attached, but it's right next to it. So it's really, really close together. The smaller lobby here is themed around trains and the railroad. So as a lot of you know, Walt Disney was really into that. If you love trains, you've got to check this out. It's great. And it even has um, like a model train that like came from Walt Disney. For dining at Boulder Ridge, you have access to everything at Wilderness Lodge. So that includes Artist Point, Whispering Canyon Cafe, Geyser Point Bar and Grill, which is awesome by the way, highly recommended, Roaring Fork Lounges, um, you've got Territory Lounge, Geyser Point Bar and Grill. So a lot of good options there and um, some really excellent choices, especially in the quick service area at Wilderness Lodge. There are two pools at Wilderness Lodge, which of course you'd have access to both. You have the feature pool and then you have the other one that's kind of like next to the um, between Copper Creek and Wilderness Lodge and they're both really great if you want to ever go to a pool that feels like the pool that goes with Big Thunder Mountain that's the one you want to go to <laughs> um, you also have bike rentals fishing a fitness center a marina boat rentals and um, transportation options at this resort you have a boat to Magic Kingdom it is really really lovely to take the boat over to Magic Kingdom we did that and it was just great. You have to take a bus to everywhere else, unfortunately, and it can be kind of long. So, you know, you've heard this before. Pros for Wilderness Lodge is it's a beautiful, beautiful setting. It feels really separated from the parks. It's kind of themed after, well, the Pacific Northwest. Guess where I am, Pacific Northwest. It's themed after my home. And it's really pretty, and no, they don't quite have the trees right. Our trees don't survive there. So it's okay, they tried. The boat to Magic Kingdom, like I said, it's a lovely trip, so that's really a pro for us. Geyser Point is just a really excellent place to eat, and so we'd really highly recommend that. And they have a gorgeous main lobby at Wilderness Lodge, really stunning, magnificent lobby, so highly recommend that you check that out as well. The cons are that you don't have quick access to the theme parks, um, like a lot of the other deluxe resorts do. It's only close to Magic Kingdom, which means that it's pretty far from everything else. Uh, and that's kind of the disadvantage of all of the Magic Kingdom area resorts. The Boulder Ridge rooms need a refresh. They are ready. And fortunately, they're going to get one. They're just about to get a refresh. They're due. And so I really think I would like to wait until they have been refurbished before I stay there. Okay, our scores for Boulder Ridge are for park access and transportation, we gave it a five. It's, it's okay. For dining, a seven. Recreation and amenities, we said it's a seven. For value, we said it's a five. Unfortunately, it's kind of expensive. The points are not cheap. If they were less expensive, this would be like an amazing value, but it's a little bit on the high side, I, I think. For availability, we gave it a seven. Sharing a lot of the amenities and dining of Wilderness Lodge is Copper Creek Villas and Cabins. This resort opened on July 17th, 2017. The DVC contract end date is January 31st, 2068. It has the same dining and same amenities as Boulder Ridge. In fact, they are very, very close to each other, just one building apart. The DVC rooms are, are there, but they also offer the Copper Creek Cabins, which are like these little cabins along the water. And those are situated along Bay Lake and they all have private hot tubs and screen in porches, which is really, really cool. It'd be fun to stay in one of those. The pros for Copper Creek is that it's the same things as Boulder Ridge. It's a beautiful resort. It has good dining options. The boat to Magic Kingdom is really nice, but it has better styling. It's more updated. The rooms are more updated and it just, it's prettier. <laughs> the cons for Copper Creek are that the studios are really, really small. They're 
one, if not the smallest, they might be like the second smallest on Disney World property among the DVC resorts. Cabins are very costly, take up a lot of points, and it's tougher to book the rooms here, partly because it's one of the newer resorts, but also because there are a lot of people who bought contracts there and there are points that are assigned kind of to the cabins, but not that many people want to book the cabins, and so then you end up with a whole bunch of people who are fighting for those studios and kind of two bedrooms and then maybe the one bedroom. So I find it a little bit difficult to book here. Our next resort in the Magic Kingdom area is Bay Lake Tower at Disney's Contemporary Resort. So Bay Lake Tower opened on August 4th, 2009. The DVC contract end date is January 31st, 2060. This is a sister resort with the Contemporary Resort. They're really kind of connected. They literally have a sky bridge connecting them together. So the dining options um, are all located over in the Contemporary Resort. It's nice because you get to use all of those options. For dining, ooh, we got a good list here. California Grill, the Wave, Chef Mickey's. For lounges, you have California Grill Lounge, the Wave Lounge, Outer Rim Lounge, Top of the World Lounge, yes, love that one. And for quick service, you have Contempo Cafe, and then there are also pool bars. You have three pools that guests may access, and you have a fitness center, a business center, community hall, fishing, a marina. For transportation, you have monorail access if you walk over into the Contemporary, and this is the big one. It's walking distance to Magic Kingdom. It's just minutes to walk into Magic Kingdom, and that is absolutely huge. If you have kids and you have a stroller, being able to just walk straight into Magic Kingdom and not disassemble everything and get on a bus is amazing. And actually, the monorail gets you that as well. The monorail to Epcot via the Ticket and Transportation Center, or is it the Transportation and Ticket Center? I always mix that up. The TTC. You can go straight to Epcot via the monorail from there, so you'd have to hop a monorail, get over to the TTC, and then go from the TTC to Epcot, but it's still convenient. And you would have to take a bus to Hollywood Studios or Animal Kingdom. The pros for Bay Lake Tower are that it's an easy walk to Magic Kingdom. I mean, really, really easy walk. You have monorail access to Magic Kingdom. It has great, great dining options, and it feels like you're right in the middle of action. Like, it feels like there's this hustle and bustle and like energy about Bay Lake Tower that's really, really fun. And also the one bedrooms there have two bathrooms, which is really great. And then of course you can get theme park views and fireworks views and it's just so much fun. And then Top of the World Lounge, that's awesome too. The cons for Bay Lake Tower are that it is expensive. It takes a lot of points to stay at Bay Lake Tower. The studios at Bay Lake Tower are very, very small as well. A lot of them have theme park views but by evening, but in the daytime, you're staring at a parking lot and I'm not like too excited about that. The theming is not really that immersive for me. It feels a little bit more like a normal hotel or kind of like a 70s hotel, I guess you could say. I mean, that's part of its charm. They're not gonna change it, but it's just a little bit of a weird mishmash of like Mary Blair art and then 70s modern and then like modern modern. It's a little bit confused style-wise. Our ratings for Bay Lake Tower are, for park access and transportation, we gave it a 10. You can't beat it. I mean, that's it. That's it. That's the standard. For dining, we gave it a 9. For recreation and amenities, we set an 8. For points value, it's a 3. It's expensive to stay here. And for availability, also a 3. This is a hard one to book. So again, a lot of people like to own here so that they can stay here. Our next resort is in the Magic Kingdom area as well, and it is Polynesian Villas and Bungalows. Polynesian Villas and Bungalows open on April 1st, 2015. The dining options are Ohana, Spirit of Aloha Dinner Show, uh, Kona Cafe, Captain Cook's, which is the quick service. Um, you've also got the Pineapple Lanai where you can get a Dole Whip, and you've got Tambu Lounge and Trader Sam's, which is so much fun. And then of course the pool bars as well. The lava pool is the feature pool and it's really cool because you have a view of Cinderella Castle. Like, I mean, from the pool, you can be in the pool and see the castle or watch fireworks. That is amazing. There's fishing, a marina, boat rentals, and a beach. No swimming available at the beach. A special feature about this resort is that they have these overwater bungalows. They're really cool and they're really, really expensive and they eat up a lot of points if you wanna stay there. So some people were really upset when they built these because they felt that it took up the view and you know, that's a fair, a fair criticism. Polynesian only has the bungalows and then studios. There are no one bedrooms or two bedrooms at Polynesian and that's a real limiting factor for certain people. Polynesian rooms are the largest studios on Disney World property at 447 square feet. 
They also have a great feature we love where it has a split bathroom. They're not two full bathrooms. They are a toilet short of being a full bathroom, but someone can take a shower here, someone can take a bath over there, and they are not bothering each other, and that is awesome. For transportation at the Polynesian, um, you can take the monorail to the Magic Kingdom, which is really, really convenient, or you can walk right over to the TTC Ticket and Transportation Center, or the Transportation Ticket Center, and you can go right over and take the monorail directly to Epcot, no transfer necessary, and it's just a short walk. It's remarkably close, actually. <laughs> you can also take a water taxi to MK, which is really a lovely trip and very relaxing and pretty. You would take the bus to all the other locations. The pros for Polynesian is, well, it's one of the original resorts at Disney World. That's pretty special. I mean, I remember growing up and going past it on the monorail and thinking, wow, I'd love to stay there someday. And um, you have amazing access to Magic Kingdom. You can walk right over to Grand Floridian and take advantage of all the amenities and uh, dining over there. It's super relaxing. Um, there's tons of great dining, huge studios, and I mean, Dole Whip. So there's that, Dole Whip. Polynesian is probably our favorite place to watch Magic Kingdom fireworks. There's nothing better than eating a Mickey bar together you know, on the beach at Polynesian and watching fireworks or having a drink on the, the terrace at Trader Sam's. I mean, it's just so relaxing and beautiful. The cons for Polynesian is that it's pretty expensive. It eats up a lot of points if you want to stay there. Also, there is no one or two bedroom option to stay there. Our ratings for park access and transportation, it's a 10. For dining, we gave it a nine. For recreation and amenities, it's a nine. For points value, I gave it a four. And for availability, I gave it a seven. It's remarkably easy to book a studio there most of the year. Now, at really tight times, it does get difficult, but we really thought that we would have to own there to get a studio there, and we've been pleasantly surprised that the availability has actually exceeded our expectations. Okay, here comes the big flagship resort. It is the Villas at Grand Floridian Resort and Spa. The villas at Disney's Grand Floridian open on October 23rd, 2013. The contract end date is January 31st, 2064. There are a lot of dining options here. Citrico's, Narcozis, Grand Floridian Cafe, Victoria and Albert's, 1900 Park Fair, Garden View Tea Room, Gasparilla Island Grill, and, and then they also have pool bars and lounges include Citrico's Lounge and the Enchanted Rose. So there's a lot, there's so many places to dine here. You also have two pools, which are also great. There is a beach, but no swimming available there. There is a business center, a fitness center, a marina, boat rentals, a hair salon, and a full service spa. Again, one of only two resorts that has a full service spa going. Transportation options, you can take the monorail to the Magic Kingdom, or you can also take a boat across, which is really quite relaxing and pretty. There is a walking path now to Magic Kingdom. Thank you, yay, they just opened this recently. Um, and you can also take the monorail to the TTC and then hop on the Epcot monorail and then move on over to Epcot without ever having to get on a bus, which is pretty great. You would have to take the bus to the other theme parks. The pros for Grand Floridian is that it has excellent access to Magic Kingdom. It has a lot of views of fireworks and the lake from the resort. It's a great place to watch fireworks. It's got a beautiful Victorian style main lobby. I mean, it's really magnificent. And when you walk in, it's, it's really kind of a breathtaking space. In the main lobby, there is also a smaller DVC lobby. The studios also have the split bathroom configuration, so one person can take a bath, somebody else can be using a different part of the bathroom, and it kind of has like a pocket door separating it, which is a great configuration. I mean, short of having two full bathrooms, you know, it's the next best thing. The cons are that it's just really, really expensive to stay there. It eats up a lot of points. The, it's kind of a small resort, and so the availability is really difficult. It, it, gets uh, booked up really quickly. Okay, so our scores for Grand Floridian are for park access and transportation. It's a 10. Again, you can't really beat, beat this. For dining, we also gave it a 10. For recreation and amenities, we said it was a nine. Points value, uh-oh, we gave it a two. For availability, we gave Grand Floridian a two. It's really hard to book. I did finally book it for this summer, but I mean, it took a global pandemic for me to book Grand Floridian. I think that's a bit much. Okay, finally, we are going to reveal our results to you. So we're gonna go from lowest score to highest, and we have several ties here. So in our lowest spot, we have a three-way tie. Boulder Ridge, Copper Creek, and Riviera all received 31 points. Sorry, folks, you're in the bottom. I mean, one of my home resorts is even in it, so clearly we were trying to be fair here. 
We love it, but when you got those uh, value and availability rankings in there, it really hurts some of those premium resorts. Okay, our next one, we have another tie. At 33 points, we have Bay Lake Tower and Grand Floridian. So two Magic Kingdom area resorts are at 33 points. At 34 points, we also have a tie between Beach Club and Old Key West, two great resorts as well. Next on the list, in the number four spot, we've got Boardwalk. And that one was really a pretty good value, so congratulations, Boardwalk. And now we're finally to the final three. What are our top three? At 38 points, coming in our third spot, we have Saratoga Springs. The winner, it's actually a tie. <laughs> the winner is at 39 points, we have both Animal Kingdom Lodge and Polynesian Villas and Bungalows. So those are our winners, yay! yay! Congratulations, Animal Kingdom Lodge and Polynesian Villas and Bungalows. You are our winners because you are a great balance between experience, amenities, transportation, dining, availability, and cost. And so we think those are great resorts. Thank you so much for joining us today. This was a really, really fun one to put together. And wow, a lot of information, but we hope that it has helped you to think about what resort you might want as your home resort or what resort you might want to book on your next Disney Vacation Club trip. Thank you so much for joining us. And remember, there's magic in the music. Bye, everybody.